Hi guys, welcome to a new video. Sorry, I'm not uploaded in a year. I kind of didn't want didn't want to make videos anymore. But so in this video, I'm gonna show you, this is part one to making a clicker game. Those clicking simulators. So let's start first. Let's make our leader stuff. Let's go into server script service and press the plus and press script. Now let's try our first script. So we're gonna get when the player joins, which will be game not player that player added, and then we're gonna click it to a function and we're gonna pass the player. So this once the player joins, we're just gonna make it the role of player. Heart. Then we're gonna make a folder and a player listening. We're gonna name it stats. We're gonna make a folder player so local stats equals instance dot new folder and then parent it to the player so it is inside of the player then we're going to name it by doing stats dot name equals and then do the stats this just gives it a name so now if we press on play and we go into our players items we will have a new folder called leader stats see leader stats Basically, we're just gonna insert int value into this, and we're going to name it clicks. Well, you can name it anything you want, but I will be naming it clicks for this tutorial. So we're gonna start by doing local clicks, or the name of your object, and instance dot new int value. This is inserting an int value, so a string value is a text value. A bool value you can set to false or true, and an int value is a number value. So we're going to make a number value and parent it to stats. So it's inside of that folder. Sorry about the background noise, it might be very loud. Now we're done, we're going to do clicks a lot, and we'll make sure it's always zero when they first start. We're going to make its name to clicks. So this is just the abbreviation, this is what it will show up next to our username. Now uh, let's go ahead and name our script, I'm going to name it lead stats, just so we know. Now let's make a rebirth, so we're going to do local rebirth equals instance.new int value. We're making another number value, and we're going to put it into stats. These can be any name you want, I'm doing clicks and rebirths just for the tutorial. Then we're going to do rebirth dot value will equal one because this will be our multiplier. So if this is zero, so let's say we're going to do every time you click you get one. If you times one by zero, you get zero. So you're gonna have to times it by at least one at minimum. So this will be one or over. Then we're going to do rebirth dot name. We're just gonna name it whatever you want. And we're gonna name it like that. Alright, so now if we join the game, we should have two values next to our username, reverse and cat or clicks. As you can see, and if you go into the player, we go into leader stats, you can see these two values. We can set them, let's say 12, and we can even set the clicks to any number that we want. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a button, so we can actually gain something. So in starter GUI, press the plus and insert screen GUI. We're going to name this main for now. Then we're going to add a text button. Now locate this where you want. I'm going to put mine at the bottom of the screen. Customize it how you want. Make it cool. You can make it as a gradient. I'll do, I'll do that. I'm going to make it say click. You can change the fonts and everything. Just do whatever you like. Going to add a UI corner and a gradient to make this. And basically, a gradient you can just have it have multiple colors. So let's say at the start of it to be a lighter blue, and the end of it to be a darker blue. Or see red. So we have our button. Let's name this quick for now. 
Now, let's make it so it actually gives us our player leader stats. So click the plus and add in a local script. We can run the script. Uh, I will show you in future videos on how to use this with remote functions, but for this video, we're not going to use remote functions. So we're going to make it. So we're going to check when the player clicks on the button. So script dot parent dot mouse button when clicked connect and then a function. So when the button is clicked, it'll run this. If you were going to make a remote, we will do the remote's name and then fire search server. That's just a little tip. So now let's do it. So let's get the local player, which will be game the player the local player. Now let's go into the player stats. So we're gonna do player dot leader stats. And then whatever you named your stats for me, click and then not value for getting the number of it. Then you can go ahead and copy this so you can retype it. I'm going to retype it. And it will equal player dot leader stats dot click stats value. And then plus however much you want. I will make mine five. Now let's say you want to add the reverse multiplier here. So you would go into add and you make a new local. So this I'll name it local reverse equals player dot leader stats dot reverse dot value. This is getting the value of the reverse. If it's not, if it's before play, local player, you won't be able to get the player, and you have to go and you'll have to type game not player the local player not leader stat. But we're just gonna do this to make it easier. So after the five, we're going to do times and then our rebirth value. So every time our rebirth increases, we'll get more per click. Let's go ahead and test that. If I'm going too fast, please tell me in the comments or from or if you want to learn anything else let's join up here okay, my character is not loading for some odd reason okay. so see our clicks are zero once we press click it will increase by our integer that we added so if we keep clicking five now let's say we make our multiplier to ten every time we click we'll get more so if we make it a hundred as you can see, we're getting a lot quicker. So now we're going to make it so we can actually rebirth. So first, you want to insert a friend. Can okay, name I will name this friend rebirth. Locate this however you would like. Increase the size for the link. Going to make it look like this now. Going to customize it how I want. I want to do that corner. I'll make it gradient as well. Because why not? Make it purpley blue there. And here we're going to make it the lighter blue. As you can see, it looks nice like that. So in our rebirth page, I'm going to add a text label and we're going to just Make it so called one. We can make it a title. I want to rename this to title. Oops. And it's scaled. Customize it here. Want. I really apologize for the background noises. Scale this to this size and remove the background. Alright, now we have our rebirth frame. Alright, now we're gonna add a button to actually rebirth. We're gonna need Called rebirth. We're going to change this index to 3, meaning it'll be over everything else. Let's see if we make it 1. Well, because everything else is 1, it will stay on top, but usually everything else will be above it, so if we add like a frame, it'll this will be behind the frame. Right, so let's add it where we want. Corner. Where we want, and then make it say rebirth. The text to white and this bold and then you can color it however you would like I'm going to make my green like this and just skip right now we're going to add a text label we can make this display your multiplier so here and you can make this uh, 
I'm just gonna say current multiplier here and we're going to make it bold. Then I'm just gonna make it white for this tutorial. Then color it however you want. I'll make it a little lighter blue in the background. I'm going to remove the border picture size and I'm going to add a UI corner. So for me it'll look like this. Now the text does not matter currently, we will modify the text in the actual scripts. So now what we're going to do, we're going to make it so we can display the price. So, we're going to add another text label. To make this one cost, or whatever you want to make. I'm going to make it say cost. I'm going to make mine yellow for the background. Change the zoom up to 3 and put it near the button. And just scale this however you would like. Do whatever you would like to do with it. This will just say our cost volume. We're going to add a UI corner. So, so far, this is how our GUI is looking. Now, we're going to make it work. Or we could, one final detail that you could add. Is let's add a um, description. So we're just gonna grab this and we're gonna put it here, scale it here, and we can make it say every time you rebirth, you will gain a new a new multiplier. Scale it, hold, just customize it. I'm going to make a back. All right, so here. Rebirth, and then we have our GUI finished. Well, not completely finished. We don't have all of the script in there. So we're going to add a script into our frame. The local script. Gonna name it handler. So we're gonna get the button local rebirth equals script parents dot rebirth for cost. Script.turns.cost. Now we're going to do rebirth and then mouse button when clicked, connect function. So when the rebirth button is clicked, we're going to make a local player as well. Local player will equal game not player the local player. So we're going to see if the player. Right, here. This is a way we could do it. So before you type anything in the handler script after what I've already written, go to server script service and we can create a new leader stat. This new leader stat or we can call it cost. So local cost will equal instance new and value. We're gonna parent this to player so it does not appear in the top right corner. And we're just gonna make the cost value and to whatever you want the starting price to be, I'll do one hundred. And the cost name will equal cost for me. So, if the player's leader stats clicks value is greater than or equal to the player cost dot, then so basically what this is doing is if the player's clicks value or whatever your currency is is greater than the cost then it'll add the rebirth because we didn't we parented the cost to the player we would end up the stats we're going to only do player.cost.value instead of player.leaderstats.clicks.value so then after this we're going to add the rebirth to the player so player.leaderstats.rebirth of value equals player dot reader stats dot reverse value plus one. Then we're gonna do player dot leader stats click stop value so player dot leader stats dot stop value minus player dot cost dot value. So we're subtracting it by whatever the price is. And we're adding a rebirth to a player's rebirth. Again, you can make this zero by just doing player dot leader stats to equal the value equals zero. But for now, I'm just going to make it so you can purchase rebirth. Then we're going to make the player dot cost value is equal to player dot cost value, and then times I'm going to do 150. So every time you rebirth, 
the rebirth price will increase so you can have infinite rebirths you can keep purchasing rebirths now we're going to put a script into the multiplier which what this is going to do is display how many rebirths we have so we're going to do a while true do or actually while wait do so basically this is just going to be like a loop it's going to keep checking if the rebirth has increased local player equal to game not player in the local player and then play script dot parents dot text will equal and then i'll say current multiplier so basically we're making we're changing the text to the script so we're changing the text to current multiplier and these two dots right here is a continuation so we're going to continue it and add the player's leader stats on the reverse value so we're gonna do current multiplier and then we're gonna do the space if you want to and then we're gonna do a continuation and then we're gonna get the player's rebirth value so now we're going before we test this we're going to add a toggle button for the frame so we're gonna add a text button we're going to put this right here on the side over the centers right there and we're going to make this button blue background I'm going to make it say reverse scale it I'm going to make it bold and change the color to white now we're going to remove the text border we're going to add a UI corner right, so this is our toggle button so first we're going to go to our reverse frame and we're going to filter the properties or we can manually look for it where it says visible I'm going to search it so this and then visible to false so basically we're gonna make this button if the frame is not visible so if this is false then when the button is pressed it'll make it true but if the button is pressed and this is true then it's gonna make it to false so let's add a script into our button let's name the button toggle so let's insert a script so script dot parent dot mouse button one click to connect function so when the button is clicked, so we're gonna then we're gonna go and locate wherever the reverse is. So for me, the reverse frame is there. Script dot parent dot parent. So the script's parent is the toggle button because it's inside of the toggle. Then we're getting the parent of the toggle button, which is um the main, and then we're going to get reverse, which is in the main, and then we're gonna make it not script dot parent dot parent dot reverse. So basically, it's making it so if it is visible we're gonna make it not visible if it's not visible we're gonna make it visible all right let's go ahead and test our game everything should be working we're gonna check output just in case because i still do make many mistakes our reverse button wait we did not get the flexibility so our toggle we're go to here. we have to add dot visible to the end because we're toggling its visibility now if we go in and we test out our game everything should be fully functional reverse as you can see current multiplier one because my reverse is one. Oh, we did not display the cost value yet but i'll just show you all right so our cost value is 100 at default so see if we press the button nothing will happen so let's go ahead and get ourselves 100 clicks it's rebirth as you can see to reverse and our cost is 150 let's make the cost to display the price we're going to add a go to our gui and we're going to go to cost we're going to insert a local script then we're going to do while wait do local player equals game dot player dot local player player dot reader stats or no mm, script dot parent dot text equals and we're going to do a dollar symbol and then player not cost our values we're just making the parents text which is the cost two dollar symbol and then whatever the cost value is so now let's enter the game and we should have the basics of our clicking game completed and that will be the end of this tutorial as you can see we're in the game we press the click we gain click so if we go to reverse as you can see we have our nice UI current multiplier is one because we have one rebirth and our price is 100 so now let's see if we don't have enough, won't do anything. So if we get 100 clicks now, 
and press it. Boom, two rebirths, 150. Let's go ahead and get that 150 again. And as you can see, it will infinitely increase. So no matter how much we get, we'll always be able to. Basically, we can get infinite rebirths without having to manually add the new rebirths price and everything. So you basically created your basic starting game. As you can see, we can keep on rebirthing, keep on getting money or clicks in my case. You can change how much the price increases by in the um, script, in the handler script, by changing the multiply value. In the next video, we'll show you how to save value, just to showcase here. If you want to increase the cost value or decrease, you can change this. Let's say you want it to be double, then you do 2. If you want it to be less, you can do um, 1.20, 1.27. I'm just doing 1.50 for the sake of the video. I hope you learn something new if you have any questions or need any extra help please tell me in the comments and yeah sorry for not uploading in a very very long time besides for yesterday which was my experiment video and i hope you enjoy this is part one